welcome back. We're here in Cupar Face Off One by the Condor. Human got it on the half. And welcome back. We're here in Cupar Face Off One by the Condor. Human got it on the half. We're poked back in by Cupar. 18.02 left here in the first period. Tied at zero. Puck line behind the net for number eight. McCray, McCray centers pass out front, looks, turns around, shot on net, shovel up inside, Trevor Head, out to get it up, kept in by number 20, Blundell, pack around on the Cote on the half boards, tries to get it up, Ethan gets it across the blue line, and poked away by Fruman, Fruman on a breakaway, goes in, shoots, scores, and the Banbury Tundra go up one to nothing here in Cupar. At 17.37 left in the first period, the Brenbury Tundra go up one to nothing on the Cupar Canucks here in Cupar, Saskatchewan at the Cuplex. You're listening to Bell Valley Junior Hockey League action on Melville's Rock Station, The Buzz, and Saskatchewan News Network, sasnews.net. Face off at center, one by Fruman. Uh, Johnson can't handle it. Johnson back up, still wearing a cage as he has 16 stitches on his face. Back behind, tickle by number nine. Hart, Hart with it, uh, battling with Fruman. Hart with it still. Looks out in front, centering pass. Shot, blocked by Hasper and picked up by Susky. Susky with it now, taking it wide off to the right side. Gets it over to Hasper. Hasper shoots it on net and goes over wide. Kept in by Rogers. Rogers knocks it deep down into the glove to head by number 15. No 15, 16, uh, dirt catch. Fruman now with it in his own zone, gets it over to Hasper. Hasper looking for the hard pass across over to Johnson. Johnson carries it into the Cupar zone. He tries to beat the defender. Big hit by number 17, Colin Colodi. And they'll have a face off to the right hand side of the Cupar's net. Gerber is in net tonight. 16.50 left in the first period. The score is 1 0 Bredenbury over Cupar so far here at the Cuplex. Uh, Proyan is kicked out of the faceoff. It looks like Desmond Denomi is going to have to take the draw. Faceoff one back to Proyan. Proyan tries to knock it past over to and that kept in by number 18. Back behind is Swain. Swain shovels it back to Red Whitehawk with it on the side. He's battling with it. Kept in by Prying, but it gets out of his legs. Knocked back into the zone by number five, Prying. 21. Paralizak now with it. Now on the side with Mackinac. Mackinac up the corner after the center. It's intercepted by Whitehawk, number 16. Lodi playing with it in front. He can't handle it. Tries to catch it off over to the middle. Now head with it out on his own blue line. Looking up the side and picked up by Denomi. Denomi with the puck. Oh, squirts out to the center. Cupar with a good chance here. Streaks in. Number third. Backhand. Roger. That shoots it up. Blocked by Croyne. Croyne gets it out of the zone. Picked up by Swain. Swain backhands it up to Denomi. Denomi crosses it. We're at 14 tonight. Shoots in on net. Blocked. That looks like it went off the toe. Back behind the net now is uh, Polarzik. Lars is limping. He looked, took that block right on the toe. Did not look like it felt very nice. Now streaking in, number is number 11. They don't have an 11 on the score sheet at the moment. That must be one of their AP players. Fans on the shot, and that's cleared out by number 18, Frank Cote. And that'll go down for icing, but is on net, so it'll be waved off. Off to the side, cleared out. Picked up by Hasper at center. Nice. Uh, he's got the puck now. Dishes it over to Cote. Cote with it in his feet over to Beatham. Beatham dumps it in and everyone up there. Coming in on the floor check now is Beatham. Beatham with it. Or, uh, Head now has it on the half boards in his own zone. He's looking around, spins back around. He's confronted by a Cupar player. Sosky with it gets it out and that'll go down for no icing. It's waved off. 14 44 left in the first period. Whitehawk with it now at his own blue line. He's looking for it, puts it off the boards. 
Beef a one touch pass to Susky. Susky with it. Toe drags. Comes in. Shoots. Big save by Gerber. Back out in front with it now. Don't know it there. Whitehawk keeps the puck in. Back behind the net. Prove it. Centering pass for Susky. Blocked in front. And Cupar will come the other way out of their own zone. Shot in on that, but it'll go wide. Picked up by Whitehawk on the sideboards. Puts it up over to Rogers. Rogers is there. Picked up by number seven. Keating calling Lodi now with it. Lodi with it. Off the boards. Puts it up off to the center, but it's picked up by Hasper. Hasper turns the other way with some speed. Goes around Colodi. Takes it into the corner. It's checked by number eight, McCray. Shovels it back around to under the wing. Throws back around, Cupar with it down in the corner, looking stretch pass, doesn't find anybody, but that will go down for icing. And they'll have a face off down in the Cupar zone. 13.45 left in the first period. You're listening to Pell Valley Junior Hockey League action on Mellows Rock Station, The Buzz, www.thebuzzrocks.ca, and as well as on Saskatchewan News Network, www.sasnews.net, for all of your Pell Valley Junior Hockey League action. We will also be broadcasting the uh, Allen Cup uh, round robin games this year in April. That's the uh, Senior AAA National Championships here in Rosetown, Saskatchewan. Wins in the slot with Susky Shot scores! And the Brandenbury Tundra go up 2 to nothing on the Key Park Canucks. With 13.32 left in the first period. Puck got loose right in the slot, and Susky just shot her in. Found the hole. The tundra, tundra go up two to nothing. Coyne with the face off here. That's kind of right. It's won by Cupar, though, but gets back to Johnson. Johnson puts it off the board to Denomi. Denomi carries it in. He's still with it. Curls back, looks for a centering pass, but that comes out of his zone to Johnson. Johnson fires it in on that. Everybody needs to clear. He's delayed offside. Puck back behind the net with Paul Pilotti. He wraps it around the boards. Brian with the check. And the puck gets out. Hasker with it in his own blue line. Gets it up to Swain. Swain now puts it up over to... Oh, it's intercepted by Pilotti. And Brian with the late hit. Looks like we'll have a penalty for two minutes for kneeing on number two, Jaden Klomodowski. For the Q Park Canucks and the Brenbury Tundra will go on a power play for the next two minutes at 13.05. Four left in the first period. Face off to the right hand side of Gerber. One back by the Tundra. D to D. Johnson shot on that. Goes off Denomi's foot. Back in the corner. Denomi with it. Grumman knocks it around, but it's picked up by number five, Mackinac. Mackinac backhands it off. Looks like it hit the roof, but there will be no call. Asper with it now behind the net. He looks for a pass up to Johnson. Now that's a kind of a bubble pass over to Peetham. Peetham gets it deep, dumps it in. Coming hard on the four, on the four check. Puck kept in by Fruman. Picked up by uh, Canucks, and the Canucks will dump it down. That's better on the penalty kill. Asper with it now behind his own net. Stops with it. He's looking for an outlet, looking for an open on the pass. Gets it over to Fruman on the right hand side. He carries it up through center. Gets it around number 21, Kolarczyk. Now Susky with it, shoots it on net, gets a shot back around the net. He's looking, puts it off the boards. Asper stretches, does not quite keep it in. And he'll regroup back into the neutral zone. Finds Grubin on the blue line, hard pass. Uh, and now takes it in across down, gets deep back behind the goal line. Leaves the puck right in front. That'll get cleared out by Cupar and down the ice for no icing. 40 seconds left in the penalty to Kolbodowski. Oh, Hasper fans on the puck and in front shoots. Big save by Schmidt. Rebound, another save. Another save by Schmidt. And that's cleared out of there by Swain. Brown Susky on the right hand side. Susky carrying it in. Cuts across the slots, poked away by the big guy Coloni. Coloni carrying it in. Oh, sorry, that's not Colody. That's uh, that's a different player. That's number seven, uh, William Blundell. 
Johnson with it back behind his own net looking for an outlet pass. He finds Ruben at center ice, tripped up by can't handle the pass, but gets it straight to Sussy and carries it across the board. Shoots on five hole shot stuff by Durbin. Shot by Blundell, big hit on the head. So swing, it looks like number 17, Colin Pelotti, is going to go away here for penalty. Wait to see what he gets here from the referee with 10 51 left in the first period. Colin Pelotti, two minutes for elbowing. And we'll have a face off in the Q par zone to the left hand side of further, our right hand side. With 10 51 left in the first period, the Frenry Tundra lead 2 to nothing. They're on the power play. Face off, one shot in by Rogers straight on net. We'll have another whistle, 156 left in the, in the period, or the penalty. 10.47 left in the period. Face off to the right hand side of Gerber. One by the Tundra gets it back to the Whitehawk. Whitehawk with PD to Hasper. Hasper looking back door, but is intercepted by Cupar. Cupar gets the puck out. Of, and that will not be icing for a penalty kill. Schmidt coming back out, stops the puck for Hasper. Hasper looking for his outlet. Finds Rogers out at center. I see intercept the pass, bumps back into Whitehawk. Whitehawk with it now. Hit by hits the ref. Hosapple in front. Big team with a big chance. Checked by Hasper then. Puck outside up the middle is Whitehawk now with it up the middle. He gets off the right hand side and that'll be an offside. We'll have a face off just outside the two part zone. Here with the Bell Valley Junior Hockey League on Pebbles Rock Station, The Buzz, and uh, Saskatchewan News Network, www.fastnews.net. Just outside is Ruman. Ruman with the, uh, with the face off. One by Cupar, number four, Cockwell. Cockwell then dumps it down back behind the net. Schmidt leaves it for Johnson. Johnson. The assistant captain dishes it over to Hasker. Hasker with it, drops it over to Susky. Susky speaks in on the right hand side. He gets back behind the net for Desmond right out front with Benoli. We're battling with the puck back behind the net. He's on there with Bruin. Bruin skates out in front. Puck back behind for Denoli again with it. He tries to get that puck back over to Susky. Susky then knocks it over to Denoli behind the net. Looking in, coming in as Johnson shoots. Big save by Gerber. There's a poke on the net on the goaltender. Are they going to get away with that? 9.38 is left in the first grade. 2 0 is the score for the Bradbury Tundra over the Q Park Canucks. 47 seconds left in the penalty to Pelodi, uh, elbowing penalty, and power play brought to you by the Langenford Motors. One by the Tundra, back over to Johnson with it on the blue line. He shoots it low on that to Gerber. Rebound comes out to. To the half one shot again, it's held on to by Fruman shot. That's a uh, banner in my way. <laughs> we'll have a face off to the right hand side of Gerber in the Q par zone. Face off one by the Tundra back to Johnson. Johnson fires it on that, goes off of a, a foot of number nine, Hart. Shot on net by Susky, goes up and out of play. Faceoff will come outside as it didn't touch any QPAR players before it left the ring. Proven Susky, Denomi, Hasper, Johnson lines up wide to the left side. Dumped in into the puck back behind the net and Schmidt, Schmidt with it. Finds Johnson behind the net. Johnson looking for a pass and we an opening up here. Skates out front that's clipped by number two. Pomodowski dumped in on net. Schmidt docks it into the corner for Johnson. Johnson with the puck behind his own net. Picks up the puck, skates it out of his own zone. He gains the blue line, gains the red line. Gets it poked away by number two. And he will knock it back into his own zone. Asper with it behind his own net. <coughs> Dumps it over onto the sideboards. It is picked up by Hasper now again. He cuts it over, chips it over to Ruben. Ruben zooming in. Comes in on net, shoots! Oh, and he misses it. That'll be picked, kept in. 
back behind the net with it now. Skates out in front is Saski. Big chance. Puck is knocked out by Cupar, but that is knocked down for icing. With 8-10 left in the first period, Fredbury Tundra lead one to nothing over the Cupar Canucks. We're listening to Pell Valley Junior Hockey League action here on Neville's Rock Station with us. You can also tune in and listen to us on uh, Mooseman's Rock Station, The Buzz, as well as uh, Cinnaboyas and Maple Creeks. They will be simulcasting this game tonight as we broadcast from Cupar, the Cuplex here in Cupar, Saskatchewan. There's 8 10 left in the first period. 2 0 is the score for the Bradbury Tundra. And we have a face off to the right hand side of Gerber, our, I guess our right hand side too as well. Not sure what the call is going on, what the holdup is here with the referees and Coach John Kuwait. But it looks like we're going to play. All right, and as whistled in by the linesman, dropped and won by Cupar. Cupar with the puck behind their own net is number seven. William Blundell loses the puck to Brett. Beat them, beat them with it now. Centering pass to no one. Picked up by Cupar. Dropped out, intercepted by Head. will dump it back into his own zone. And picked up by the Cupar defender who puts it up off the glass, but it's kept in. And that'll be a hand pass by the ton Bradbury Tundra. And the faceoff will come outside of the Cupar zone. Seven forty-seven left in the first period. Leads off one by the Cupar Canucks. Canucks carry the puck in off over on the right-hand side. Trevor Head with the check, and he's holding on to number eighteen, Mitch Cook. Picking the AP from the Fort Knox of the Prairie Junior Hockey League. Got caught in by number twenty. Is blocked. Ethan with it, looking for a pass. Back down to offense. Definitely have a delayed penalty. Cross checking. Looks like it's going to be too far again. That'll be number 20, Dylan Blundell. Two minutes for cross checking. Here with 7.21 left in the first period. The score is 2 0 for the Brandenbury Tundra over the Q Park Canucks. You're listening to Capel Valley Junior Hockey League action on Melville's Rock Station, the buzz. What piece off one back to Johnson. Johnson with it at the blue line. He puts it off the boards over to Fruman, who feeds it back to Susky. Shot on net goes wide. Back behind is Denomi with it in the corner. He's looking out up off to Hasper. Hasper has it out on the blue line. Hasper's going to shoot it low on net. Not held on a girder, but that he'll grab the rebound. And we'll have a face off to the right hand side with 7.03 left in the first period. Brenberry Tundra lead 2 0 here at the Cuplex in Q Park. Face off one by the Q Park Canucks is dumped down into the Brenberry zone. Schmidt with it, he'll pass it out. He get, finds Denomi at center ice. He gets it over to Suski, who moves the puck well. But is checked by number four, Eric Pockwell. Knocked down by Johnson. Johnson playing with 16 stitches in his face, dumps it up to Suski, who drop passes it over to Fruman. Cuts around the defender, puts it in on net, Denomi with it, oh, and it is picked up by the Cupar Canucks, but kept knocked back in by Hasper. Hasper knocks it back around, and Fruman, Fruman trying to pick up the car, sorry, Dusty trying to pick up the car, and then the Canucks will clear it down into the Redbury Tundra zone, picked up by Johnson. Johnson with the car, keeping it across. Gets it over to Spruman, who slaps at it, but gets it into the Cupar zone. Cupar dumps it out, but uh, waved off on a high stick by number eight. McCray, McCray shoots it in on net. Schmidt with the save. And we will have a face off to the right hand side of Schmidt. Here, you're listening to Melville's Rock Station, the Buzz, with Pell Valley Junior Hockey League action. Also, the uh, video will be on here on SAS Newsnet. Face off one by Cupar, back shot on net, saved by Schmidt, rebound cleared away by the Tundra. Swain with it now along the right hand side, he's got it. And he is checked hard by number 12, Tyler Blundell. 
Whitehawk now with it, kicks it in. Knocked off on the side and jumbled around. We got a stick up to number Swain up into the chest of number 12. That's Billy Boyd Wagner. Wagner jumped in now with Head has it on the half boards on the left hand side. He dishes it over to Whitehawk over in his own circle. Looking for Swain, misses the pass, and that'll go down for icing. 523 left in the first period here in the Tundra lead two to nothing. Three seconds left in the penalty to number 20, Dylan Blundell. We have a face-off down on the right-hand side of uh, Brody Schmidt. Face-off being taken by number 18, which crooked too far to not see when he's back. He's not kept in by the by Pelotti. Brian carrying it in. It's poked at it, but still keeps him out to keep possession, and he'll carry it in deep into the corner, back behind the head, and his feet still. Still kicking it along the back of the wall. 18, number uh, Whitehawk, 16, sorry, Whitehawk keeps it in, dumps it in back behind the, the cue card net. Swain, Swain battling at it with uh, Rogers, Rogers and Brian. Keeping it around, dumps it in, around the boat, off the glass, and that'll stop behind the net. The Canucks try to clear it off the glass to number five. Mackinac. Trevor Head now with the puck. Drops it over to Hasbro. Or to Coyne. Coyne puts it off the glass to Swain. Swain chips at it. A big high hit by number three, Dylan Bourget. Swain just kind of ducked out of the way. That could have been pretty bad for him. 428 left in the first period for the Fredbury Tundra the visiting team. Need two to nothing on the whole team. Two part to Knox. You're listening to Pell Valley Junior Hockey League action on Metal's Rock Station, The Buzz, Stafford News Network, www.southnews.net. Shot on net goes wide. Not kept in by Johnson. Johnson tries to put back over there on the side. Carried in by number nine. Center pass. Shot. Big save by Schmidt. And he robs. Number 12, Boyd Wagner of the Cupar Canucks, and they will have a face off to the right hand side of Schmidt. You're listening to Pell Valley Junior Hockey League action on Melville's Rock Station, the Buzz. Face off to the right hand side, or left hand side of Brody Schmidt. Freund with it, wins the, the draw back to Hasper. Hasper with the puck on the side, dumps it out over and up the middle. Puck shot in is blocked by number eight and nine. Ethan Hart is on, knocked back into too far zone. Number 21 now has it to Larcha. Up on the left hand side, try to be dumped in on net by number nine. Ethan Hart, centering pass, couldn't be held onto by number four. Cockwell, puck goes the other way now. Hasper with it, carries it in the zone, splits the D, trying to anyway, but he is checked by number seven, William Blundell. Kips the puck up the center, number nine, Ethan Hart. Kips the puck in back behind the net is uh, Brody Schmidt. Schmidt clears the puck around from the other side onto the half boards. It's now with it. Kept in, fired on net, and Schmidt. Schmidt blows it down, but he'll hold on to it. And there'll be a face off to the left hand side of the Brenbury net. Face off one by the Canucks, but, but stripped by Whitehawk. Whitehawk still with it, gets it out of his zone. Peloni with it for the Canucks has it. He goes up, turns back out on the right hand side, still with it, takes it out of his blue line, but shoots it over the boards. And there'll be a face off now, just outside, I believe, or no, inside, all the way inside the Cupar Canucks zone. As the uh, they were the ones to shoot the puck out over the, the board, so they will get the face off in their own zone. Ruman taking the draw. Lost the draw back. The Canucks win it back into their own zone, back behind the net. The red line off the side, the Canucks still with possession. Number 14, Blundell. D to D, 15, chips it in, blocked by Whitehawk. Whitehawk kind of chips it ahead for Truman, gets it into the few part zone. 21, Belarza with it behind the net. He carries it in off up on the left hand side, left wing side. Still with it up the center. 
He's kept the ball and he gets it in deep into the country zone. Chusky takes a big hit for number 11. They have a lot on the sheet here right now. Must be one of their AP players. Broomin with the puck carries it in behind the net. Oh, and a high stick up around the net. Might have been a little embellished by Truman, but in, nonetheless, the stick got up in there in number 21, Leighton Falarczuk, with two minutes for high sticking. And there'll be a face off to the right hand side of Herbert, his left or right. And a power play for the Brenbury Tundra with 2.16 left in the first period. The Brenbury Tundra will be 2 to nothing over the Q Park Canucks. You're listening to Pell Valley Junior Hockey League action on Melville's Rock Station, The Buzz, and live on. Saskatchewan News, Net, Saskatchewan News Network, www.sasnews.net. Hasper with it at the blue line. He dumps it in. They will have a, keeps it up at the blue line. He'll dump it in off the back wall. And then Gerber looking for it. Still loose set. I don't think he will jump on that. He'll have a face off to the right hand side of Gerber. 157 left in the first period. Minute 42 left in the penalty to number 21, Kalarzik. The power play is brought to you by Langenberg Motors in Langenberg, Saskatchewan. A friendly neighborhood Ford dealership. Puck dumped down by the Q uh, Park Canucks. Stopped by Schmidt behind his own zone. Looking for a pass around to the side. Hits it up to Denomi on, on the wall. Steps up to the center. No one there. Picked up by the Canucks. And then checked by Hasper, who then gets up to Saski, who can't hold on to the pass. But it is ripped back down on that. To the left hand side of Schmidt, but picked up by Johnson again, who cuts behind his own net. He's looking for Hasper, drops it for Hasper, who then swings left. And looking for touched by Nomi, but will go for icing nonetheless. And we will have a face off over to the left hand side of Schmidt, right hand side from the camera. Or sort of the left hand side, the closest to us here. Truman, Johnson, Hasper, Denoni out on the ice with Suski wide, looking off for a board to a breakaway pass, and they feed him. Just about gets him. He gets a stick knocked out of his hands by Gerber. Puck coming the other way now by the uh, Canucks, dumping in deep behind their net. Schmidt steps out to play the puck. Gets it over to Johnson. Johnson puts it off the boards. 18 try to make the check from Mitch Cook. It's over Hasper. Tries to hit Rogers. Rogers not moving fast enough for that puck. And then will go for icing with 51.6 seconds left in the first period. 36 seconds left in power in the Langenberg Motors power play for the Brenbury Tundra. And the Tundra lead two to nothing. Over the Q Park Canucks here at the Qplex in Q Park, Saskatchewan. They're listening to Pell Valley Junior Hockey League action on Bell's Rock Station Buzz. Puck dumped down in the set into the uh, neutral zone, picked up by the five, and it's knocked away by the Ruman. Carried in as the Canucks, and we have a delayed penalty here. Looks like on number uh, 64, two minutes for uh, Montana Johnson of the Brendan Tundra, two minutes for hooking. And uh, that'll even it up for 22 seconds. And then uh, they will go on the Louis Dreyfus Commodities penalty kill in the next, uh, actually, probably with a couple uh, 16 seconds left in the game, they will go down a man for the remainder of the period. Face off one by the Canucks, goes D to D over, shot on net, shoots and scores! Number nine, Ethan Hart. Gets the deflection in front from the shot back on the point, and the Red River Tundra will now lead two to one over the Q Park Canucks, and that was a power play goal. Or not a power play, four on four goal, and nobody will come out of the penalty box yet. With 32.3 seconds left in the first period, the Q Park Canucks carried within one. Point carries it in over the blue line, takes a hit, but gets the puck deep. Something looks like came off of him. Head with it at the center, knocks it into uh, the Cupar zone. 19 seconds left in the first period. Knocked down for a breakaway pass to the Canucks. Shoots! 
Oh, it goes wide on the on the Cranberry net. Now on the half boards is Croyne and Hart battling for it. Hart still with the puck. He's trying to get that out of there. He gets some help from number four, Cockwell. Hart with it still, and that'll do it for the first period. The Bradbury Tundra lead two to one currently over the. And welcome back here to the Qplex here in Qpark, Saskatchewan. The uh, Brandbury Tundra currently lead the Qpark Canucks two to one, and I'll uh, be on the power play for the next minute and 16 seconds. Brought to you by Landenberg Motors. Number five, the Canucks. Mackinac streaking out in, gets it over to Hart. Hart with it, gets it, dishes it back over to number four, Cockwell. Cockwell with it behind the net. Back to nine, Hart behind the net, looking for a pass out front. He's still looking for an LB. Feeds it in front to number four, Cockwell, and shoots, he scores! And they will tie it up, two to two, with 1933 in the second period. The quick goal, right off the opening face off, the, the Canucks top it, tie it up. Two to two with a goal by Cockwell. You're listening to live Pell Valley Junior Hockey League action on Mellows Rock Station The Buzz and Saskatchewan News Network, www.southnews.net. One back by the Tundra, picked up by Hasper, Patterson off the wall, to number five is intercepted. Trevor Mackinac dumps it back into. Tundra makes, Hart picks it up, he's on his backhand, but it's knocked away by Johnson. Passford checked in the corner, tucked back behind the, the, the net for the Canucks. The Canucks are coming out flying here in the second period. Shot out on the net, blocked, hits number two, goes in the corner. Or 12. Crewman with it back behind his own net, chased by Hart with Jackson. Hart picks up the puck, the Canucks skate into the center. Hart spins, shoots it on net. Gloved by Schmidt, and the puck goes off into the back corner. Big hit by Johnson. Sends a Canucks player flying, number 12, Boyd Wagner. Johnson, or Hasper with it, rather, back behind the net. Looking for Furman. Furman finds Rogers. Rogers looking for Susky now with it. Knocked away by number 18. Mitch Cook. Puck kept in by Trevor Head. Head with it looking cross ice. No one there. Wrapped around the board. Stuck Head now with it at center ice. Head looking at feeds Rogers up the middle. Rogers with it. Oh, and it's offside. Beatham hadn't cleared the zone yet. Another whistle coming in here. Not sure what that was about. But we will have a face-off just outside the blue line here of the uh, Q-Park Canucks zone. Number five, uh, Mackinac with the draw, wins it back to uh, Colin Colodi, number 17 of the Canucks. Canucks puts it off the board, so 11 will have one on, on my sheet. Back to number seven, Blundell. Blundell with it, puts it up into center ice to number 11. Something going on with Coyne and Colodi back behind the play. Puck out in front, back behind the net now, wrapped around from Lighthawk. Canucks come out just. Oh, and it falls off the front and shoots it! Knocks in the net, and that will go 3 2. The uh, Q4 Canucks have now taken the lead with 17 39 left in the second period. They go up 3 2. On a goal that. Looked like it kind of went off a few people in front of the net to mount its way into the back of the goal. I want to say that would be credit to maybe number 17, Colin Colodi. I think it might have went off a Tundra player before it went in the net. Poked away by head, head knocks it ahead. And now Fruman with it at center ice, knocks it back to Lighthawk who tries a long pass. Jumbled up at center now. Danomi with it, trying to get the puck back. Grimmett or Susky dumps it deep into the zone. Danomi looks with it now. He's got Danomi with it on the sideboards. Kept in by Grimmett. Grimmett knocks it back behind the Q part net. And that'll be picked up by uh, number seven, Lundell. Gets it out of his zone and up to number 11. 
keep our connection. So gets it in with the Fredenberg zone. Back behind it, brings it out front. Furman with it on the half board. Folks are past the defender, but doesn't get quite past him. Still looking to get it out of their zone. Susky in a foot race. Colody dives, spreads out, gets the puck out from in front. But we have a penalty behind the play, a cross checking penalty on number 16, Keenan Whitehawk for the Brad Murray Tundra, and they will go on the penalty kill brought to you by Louis Dreyfus Commodities in Yorkton. Face off is going to go to the right hand side or left hand side of Schmidt, our right. 16.37 left in the second period, scores 3 to 2 for the two part Canucks. You're listening to the Pell Valley Junior Hockey League action on Melville's Rock Station. The buzz is Saskatchewan News that we have a delayed penalty for the two part Canucks here. It's like a tripping penalty. That'll even it up, bring it to 4 on 4. Give the Tundra a seven second power play when that one expires. We have a tripping penalty on number nine. Keep our Canucks keep it apart, and that will bring the face off all the way back down into the keep our zone to the left hand side of goaltender Drew Gerber. Furman has the puck now and lost the face off. So the Canucks back to the round all the time. Kept in by Furman. Furman, or sorry, Hasper. Hasper jumps back on for Saski behind the net. Takes a hit from number 18, Mitch Cook. Furman now pokes the puck away, but the Canucks still take it, take it over to his own cockwheel looking for a pass. Poked between his legs by 18, Mitch Cook into the country zone. Turns, tries to find it up the center, but Hasker now with it up the center, cuts it through, this is put the defense, Susky picks up the puck, does drop, but not in time, and that'll be offside for the Brenberry Tundra, and that'll face off just outside of the, uh, the Q-Par zone. Forgive my snowballs here, everybody's got a cold or flu that I've been talking to anywhere. And uh, it seems to be going around. The, the Tundra actually have a couple players sick tonight. Number four assistant captain, Brady Farmer, is out with the flu. And so is number six, Matthew Gisell. He has running a fever of a, 102 as of last night. And uh, we told him to... Oh, it looks like we had a coach get kicked out for the two-part Canucks. I'm not sure if it's a coach or who. Somebody has left the bench. Face off one down, back up the Tundra carry across the red line. Hasper with it gets the blue line, cuts around number 20, shoots it on net, puts it saved by Gerber. Puck kept in by Johnson. Johnson with it on the half board, looking for a centering pass, finds Fruman. Fruman now circles back. He's looking for a centering pass or a shot angle. Gets a block behind the net, gets a stick up in the, in the face. But centering one handed pass gets, gets knocked away. On its destination, which is Susky. Puck now up in the neutral zone. Canucks with it, number two. Jacob Modelski. Intercept by Fruman. Fruman now circles back. He's looking, dodges a hit from Tom Modelski. And it is slapped in deep to the uh, two part zone by Astor. Found Susky deep in the corner now, battling with number 21, Polarzik. And then rings it around to Trevor Head over the counter over the neutral zone. Gets it over to Johnson on the 1455 left in second period. 15 seconds left of the penalty to the Brenbury Tundra. And they will be shorthanded for five seconds. Well, puck in front for the Q Park Canucks on his knees is Kowalowski. Wind up, big shot. Missed the net, number 21. Pilarzik with a big boomer from the blue line. Puck now coming across the red line with Fruman. Fruman covering it in. He's got it on his backhand. Stops in front. Shoots! Oh, and into the chest of Gerber. And he looks like he's going to come in on that. And it's tossed away by the Q-Par defender. Rather, it didn't look like it took much effort. He went flying. Having some words now with uh, Colin Colody. Captain uh, Alex Fruman will be a face. Oh, they have a penalty. The Q-Bar Canucks, number 21, looks like he did get that penalty for knocking Fruman down after the play. 
So the face off will be now on the, the deep in the Kupar zone. 1425 left in the second period. 3 2 is the score for the Kupar Canucks, who have a two minute penalty, and the uh, Redbury Tundra will go on the uh, Lagerberg Motors power play for the next two minutes if they don't score. Swain well, keeps it in on the half courts, and Swain and Croyne fighting with uh, number 18, Mitch Cook. Nomi comes in to help. He forces the puck off to his side, and the Cooper Canucks will clear the puck out of their zone, deep down into the Red Marine Country zone. Stopped by Schmidt, picked up by Johnson, now back behind the net with it. He's looking for a big stretch pass. Still with it. Oh, no options, carries it across, gets it into the other zone, and it's checked, and dumps right back down into the Q part into the Renberry zone. 13.45 left in the second period here. 1.18 left in the penalty to the Q car and the Antifer Motors power play for the Renberry Tundra. Minomi with the puck now at the blue line, he's looking for a pass, but it was intercepted by Q car. Q car now shovels it out as number five. Trevor Mackinac gets it deep down into the Brettenberry zone. Behind his net is uh, Johnson. Johnson carries it out, but is picked up by number 12. Boyd Wagner now with a chance. Pass for the stick caught in a few part defender will now go away for a hooking, holding, whichever he's going to get here. But that will even it up for the next 44 seconds to bring it four on four. And then the Tundra will go on the Louis Dreyfus commodities penalty kill. For a minute 22 seconds or 26 seconds, I guess, after that. The score is 3 2 with 13.08 left in the second period. The Cupar Canucks lead the Bread Murray Tundra. Cupar with the puck now in the half courts, looking for a centering pass. No one there, picked up by number seven. Really, Blundell, Blundell fires it in on net, gets it beside it. Uh, Whitehawk chips it up and he's picked up by the uh, Number 92, Katie Susky. Susky carrying it in. Chipped up to number 9. Hart by the two part Canucks carries it in over the blue line. And it'll be offside. As the two part player is just a couple steps ahead of Hart. And that'll throw the offside. Rogers and uh, number five, Mackinac, out to take the draw. Mackinac wins the draw, carries it out off to the left hand side, back around the Tundra net, looking for a centering pass, but goes off the way. Whitehawk gets it up to Coloni. Coloni gets it back over to Mackinac. Mackinac now with it, is checked. But keep it in and cleared out by Rogers down deep into the uh, Q par zone, picked up by Coloni now. Behind a few part zone, Pelotti now carries it out over the blue line. Gets his own red line, beats the check off by Swain. Cuts in front, but blocked shot. We're going to have a delayed penalty here at number 17. Pelotti looking at number, and Whitehawk too, looking at both of them from. Brenbury and Cupar looking like getting penalties out of this. So we're going to have one for Colodi and one for, looks like Whitehawk. Colin Colodi is a veteran in this league and might uh, do a little damage on uh, Keaton Whitehawk. They both got two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct and will sit for the next two minutes. And that will bring. Brennanbury down to three skaters, or four actually on this, because that's a coincidental, so we'll still stay five on four for the remainder of the penalty. With 11.55 left in the first period, or second period, sorry, here in Cupar, the Cuplex in Cupar, Saskatchewan. You're listening to live the Fell Valley, the Fell Valley Junior Hockey League action, rather. Live on Melville's Rock Station, The Buzz, and Saskatchewan News Network, www.sasnews.net. And you can also tune in online to uh, either Melville, Booseman, Assiniboia, Maple Creek, The Buzz, www.thebuzzrocks.ca, 
later and you can listen into these games and watch them live on video through sasnerves.net. Face off to the right hand side of Schmidt, our left, won by Kupar. The Canucks go D to D on the half boards now with the on the power play for the next 39 seconds. Puck goes into the corner off of Aaron Shaw, kept in by the Canucks, number 15. Don't have one on the list here. Good front, blocked by Johnson. The puck goes off to the side. Tried to clear out his Rogers. Chasing Hart. One time shot on net, goes wide. Rogers tries to get at it, and it is kept in by the Canucks with a diving play. Centering pass to Mackinacker. Sorry, Cockwell banging at it, and that'll be smothered by Brody Schmidt of the Brenbury Tundra. 11-16 left in the second period here. The Cupar Canucks lead the Brenbury Tundra 3-2 here at the Cuplex in Cupar, Saskatchewan. Number five, Trevor Mackinac had to take the draw. This is Furman of the Brandy Tundra, puts it back behind his own head. Johnson takes a whack at it, gets it out of his own zone, but knocked back in by the Canucks. Gloved down again by Johnson. Johnson looking for a pass. Finds Haster out of the box. He drops it for Furman. Furman puts it on. That shoots and it's deflected in by Asper. And that is a goal. And that'll be three to three. They tie it up here in the second period. 10 58 left in the period. Casper with the deflection, he, well, you put it this way, they came off the, off the penalty box and she got pecked up at the blue line, he dropped the pass for Freeman. Freeman shot it on net, but was deflected by Hasper between the goalie's legs and in. We'll have a face off at center with 10.58 left in the second period. The score is not a, is tied up at three between the Brenbury Tundra and the Cupar Canucks. With the, the center uh, gloved down by number seven, Blundell. Blundell with it now crosses his own blue line, looking for a pass. Finds Mackinac. Puck loose in the corner. Seven, Blundell turns, fires around on the side of the net. Nobody there. Janome pokes it out of his own zone. The puck goes down, picked up by Fruman. Three on one. Shoots! Oh, up the side of the net. Looked like it went in from up here, but on the wrong side of the twine. Puck wide over to Mackinac. Mackinac now with the breakaway on the side. He shoots. Saved by Schmidt. Off his stick. Goes off the glass now. Back behind the net is 14. Blundell Tyler. He's trying at it. He checks the Tundra defender. And the puck goes back behind the net now for Boucher. Boucher with it to seven. Blundell on net. Stopped by Fruman. Fruman with it. Gets it out of his own. Oh, breakaway pass for Susky. Susky comes in. Shoots and scores! Oh! Herber into the top corner, and the Brandenburg Tundra go up four to three here in the second period with 9:51 left, and that'll end the penalty two as well for both Colody and Whitehawk. Exciting second period, back and forth here between the Cupar Canucks and the Brandenburg Tundra. Back to five on five now. For both teams. Face off one by the Canucks by number eight, McCray. McCray knocks it in deep down behind the net for Whitehawk. Whitehawk for the Tundra knocks it back over. Kept in by the Canucks. On the sideboards is Beatham. Beatham gets checked by number 21. Larsen. Now behind the net is Whitehawk. Whitehawk looking for Beatham out at center. And it's picked up by the uh, Cupar Canucks in their own zone. Checked by Susky, who trips. Loses his stick. Fruman takes the check in the corner. Pull Croyne on the half board. Makes the check. Picks up the puck. And still skates through there. Makes another check on 21. Larson. In front to Fruman. Fruman gets it over to Susky. Susky can't handle it. And it goes out of his own zone. Back to Whitehawk. Whitehawk now with the puck. Tries to get it over to Head. Head looking. Head spins, tries to get it over to Whitehawk again, but Whitehawk can't handle it. He's picked up by the Canucks, number 12. Wagner, Wagner shoots! Saved by Schmidt, kept out, back onto the half boards for Croyne. Croyne puts it off the boards. And that'll go down for icing. And the Brenbury Tundra cannot change. 
as there is an icing. And it looks like Desmond Denomi took a puck to the skate and he will head to the dressing room. That might be it for him for the rest of the game. Denomi comes to us from the uh, Dundurn Wheat Kings and previously the uh, Saskatoon Wesleys of the Prairie Junior Hockey League. The previous season he actually played out in Ontario Midget AAA with the Tim with Timmins. And now he's with the Bradbury Tundra. Herman wins the pile of face off, kept in by Blundell, who shoots it in on net to save by Schmidt. And we'll have another face off to the right hand side of the Tundra goal. Brian Johnson, Cote, Hasper, Swain out there for the Tundra. 4 3 is the score for the Bradbury Tundra. 8.30 left here in the second period. Shot on net, collected wide by the Canucks. Checked by Pryne. Pryne comes up with the puck on the half boards, gets it out of his own zone, and deep into the Canucks zone. Colodi for the Canucks now back with it, back at the goal line. He's looking for an outlet pass. Nobody for checking. Looks for number four, Cockwell, but doesn't get a hold of it. Schmidt now looking for the pass out. He hits Swain on the left hand, on the left wing board. Swain gets it out of his own zone and knocks it down deep into the Canucks zone. Colodi now picks it up at the red line. That'll get waved off for icing. He looks for the pass off the skate of a Canucks player. Swain tries to get at it, but now Cote gets a hold of it. The Tundra will gain possession back in their own zone. Johnson with the puck looking wide. One touch pass, not for out by Swain, but not picked up by Cote. Cote on the forecheck. Gets it, got a glove on it a little bit. Polotti with the Canucks now. Back over up center. Gets it over. And it's gloved down by Swain. But picked up by number 18, Mitch Cook. And then dumped back down by Hasper into the Canucks zone. And that'll go down for icing with 7-18 left in the second period. The Bredenbury Tundra currently lead the Kidgar Canucks 4-3. Here at the Cuplex in Cupar, Saskatchewan, We're listening to Capel Valley Junior Hockey League action on Melville's Rock Station, The Buzz, www.thebuzzrocks.ca, uh, as well on SAS News Net, uh, www.sasnews.net, puck behind the net for uh, Johnson. Johnson looking for a pass out onto the left, hand, left wing. Pastor couldn't hold on to it, but he gets it out of his own zone. Canucks regroup at their own blue line at number 18. Cook looking for someone. Number 20 with it now. Blundell. Dylan dumps it in deep. Pastor with it behind his own net. Reverses the puck over to Swain on the left hand boards. It gets hit. Kept in by Blundell. Dumps it in deep behind the Brenbury zone. Picked up by number 3. Bourget. Bourget with the puck. Feeds in the center to Blundell. Big save by Schmidt with the blocker. Back out. To Pilarczyk. Pilarczyk dumps it in on Matt Bourget in front with the chance. Puck loose. Swain picks it up. Still with it in his feet. Got it across the blue line and dumps it in and goes for the change. Rogers and Bryant are and Susky come onto the ice now. Oh, Rogers with the attempt to try to take it away. Take it number 18 for the Canucks. Mitch Cook carries it in. <coughs> Looking for Bourget. Doesn't find him. Whitehawk gets it to Fruman at center. Fruman in on net, skating in. Shoots backhand over the net. Rogers wide open in front, had the option, and not as backhanded out into the board, into the crowd. And we will have a face off inside the QPAR zone to the right hand side of Drew Gerber of the QPAR Canucks. Truman with the draw with number 11. We don't have an 11 on the sheet, but we'll find one who is later. Stick up in the face. Back around the net is the Canucks with the pass. They're hitting up number 81. Canucks the puck into the Brenbury zone. 541 left here in the second period. Brenbury Tundra lead 4-3 over the Hugh Park Canucks. are listening to Bell Valley Junior Hockey League action. We're on Metal Park Station. We're down to icing. Rodgers tried to get it. Get 
face off to the left hand side of Schmidt, our right from the camera. Knocked around by head into the half court, it's still funneling up in there, looking at uh, Ruben and Sasuke trying to get it back behind the net, now coming around on the right hand side. Doesn't, nobody can handle it. Suski now with it on the boards, gets it off the boards to Fruman. Fruman gains the red line, but gets it deep into the Q car zone. 15. We'll have one on our list here with the puck now on, in the Q car zone. Wraps it around, picked up by number two, Paul Madowski. Paul Madowski spins, looking wide. Picked up by Rogers at the blue line, who fires it in on Gerber. Gerber drops it back behind his own net for. Pelodi to pick up. Pelodi with some speed coming around the net. Beats uh, Fruman on the bed, but Fruman pokes it by. Gets it back into the cue card zone. Intercepted by Whitehawk at the center ice, who flips it in, but doesn't get enough right on it. Pelodi looking for a guy at center, picks it up as Komodowski, mishandles it, and is fired back down by Whitehawk, but will not go for icing. Hard four check by Fruman coming in on number 15. Puck squirts out into the slot. Picked up by Pelodi, who will clear it out of his zone. Back for Johnson out at the bow line of the, in the Frenbury end. Picked up by, oh, and we are going to have a penalty. Or is it offside? What do we, what do we have in here? Looks like just offside for the Cupar Canucks. Faceoff will come outside of the Brenbury Tundra zone. 4.08 left in the second period here. 4.3 is the score for the Brenbury Tundra. Faceoff won by the Q Park Canucks. Back with it now is number four, Cockwell. Cockwell back intercepted by Swain. Swain dumps it in deep into his own zone or to the Q Park zone. Back behind his net now is number four, Eric Cockwell. Cockwell with it. Looking around, looking for a pass, carries it up behind his own net, hits number 12, Wagner. Wagner gets around in his trip, looks like Swain is going to have a delayed penalty for the Brenbury Tundra. Two minutes for tripping is the call, and the Brenbury Tundra will go on the Louis Dreyfus Commodities penalty kill. Bob Dupar has the power play. Face off will probably go inside the Brenbury Tundra zone. Face off to the right hand side, blocker side of Schmidt. Face off one by the Canucks. Back to number 18. Cook, Cook looking. Looks wide, finds 21. Blundell shot, gloved by Schmidt. And we'll have a face off to the glove hand side of Brody Schmidt of the Brenbury Tundra. 3.30 left in the second period here. One forty-nine left in the period. The penalty to Swain in the Louis Dreyfus Commodities penalty kill. Number eighteen, Cook picks up the puck. He skates it out of the Canucks zone. Gains the red line, backhands it in, and the Tundra will send it back into the Cupar zone. Back behind the net now is uh, the Canucks again. Looking for a pass, no one there, and that'll go down for icing. Number, number 21, Leighton Kalarzik. One sixteen left on the Louis Dreyfus Commodities penalty kill for the Brenbury Tundra. 2.57 left in the second period, 4-3 is the score for the Tundra over the Canucks here in Cupar. Face off one by the Tundra. Fruman with it on the half boards now. Pokes it in back behind the net. It's picked up by Kalarzik. Kalarzik with it. Puck now in the center with Cockwell. Cockwell up the center. Shoots it in on Schmidt. Rebound. Oh, saved by Schmidt again. Puck is now behind the net. Kept in by Kalodi. Or Kalarzik again. Blocked. And that'll come off somebody. It looks like Suski will pick it up at center ice. One on one with Cockwell. Toe drag shoots, oh, saved by Gerber. And we will have a face off. Either the left or right of the Canucks zone, uh, net, looks like to the glove side of Gerber. It'll be the face off. 
here at the Qplex. You're listening to Capel Valley Junior Hockey League action on Metal's Rock Station The Buzz. It's simulcast as well on Mooseman, Assiniboia, and Maple Creek. The Buzz. www.thebuzzrocks.ca. One time shot by Whitehawk was high over the net and taken and carried out by number 11 of the Qpark Canucks. Carried the earth. Checked by head. Puck on net. Saved by Schmidt. And we'll have a face off to the glove hand side of the Bradbury Tundra net of Brody Schmidt. 2 12 left here in the second period at the Qplex here in Qpar. 31 seconds left in the penalty to Swain, the Louis Dreyfus Commodities penalty kill. Face off one by the Tundra. Asper with it off the boards. Pokes it off his. Picked up now by Johnson. Johnson over to Susky. Susky with it across the blue line carries it in. And is still with it. Got one hand on his stick. It's checked by number five. Mackinac has something to say with uh, Susky. Puck picked up by uh, the Canucks now. Number 15. AP from the Midget Canucks here in the Park. Picked up by Susky. Now penalty ending to Swain. Five on five now. Ends the. Louis Dreyfus Commodities penalty kill, and that'll go down for icing at 135 against the Tundra. 4 3 is the score here in the second period at the Qplex between the. Uh, oh, it looks like Desmond Denomi is coming back into the game from the dressing room. Good to see him back on the bench. The much needed presence on the ice, the 6'3, 220 pound forward for the Bradbury Tundra. Kept in by the Canucks, Blundell, Dylan, back behind the net now for 14. Two guys from there fighting with it, looking back from that Blundell again, looking up front, not kept in by the Canucks, and carried back out into the neutral zone by Pelotti, but chipped away by Swain, fresh off his penalty. Back behind the net is uh, Dylan Blundell with puck, but he gets it over to Pelotti. Looks like he took a spill. Lodi puts it off the boards. The Fruman picks it up for the Granberry Tundra. Gets it to Hasper. Hasper puts it off the glass, but is knocked down by number 14 of the Cupar Canucks. Pelodi with the puck carrying it in, but loses it. Picked up by Fruman now at center ice. Fruman carries the game to the red line. Blue line beats the defender. Cuts cross look for a centering pass for Swain. Swain can't hold on to it. Swain looks over, finds Johnson. Johnson winds up, shoots! Big save by Gerber. Save puck goes over to the corner side half board to Blundell. Blundell gets it out, but Hasper picks it up around his blue line in the Tundra zone. He looks wide, picks up to Swain. Swain with the puck drops it over to Susky. Susky over to Fruman. Fruman on Susky's on net, and Gerber, not so much of a great shot, but he'll cover it up, and we will have a face off on the glove hand side of uh, Drew Gerber of the uh, Q Park Canucks for his. 4 to 3 with 20.5 seconds here left in the second period. 4 to 3 right now up by 1 is the Bradbury Tundra over the Two Park Canucks if you're just joining us. Shot from, from the blue line by uh, Whitehawk. Rebound picked up by Cockwell, carried out of his own zone. Poked away by Denomi. Denomi gets it to Beatham. Beatham gets it over to. Cote, Cote shot on net, picks up the rebound behind his net, beats him with it, shoots it on net, rebound in front, big save by Gerber, and that'll do it for the second period. Big chance by Desmond and Obi to go up five. And welcome back to the Qplex here in Qpar. The uh, Bredenbury Tundra currently lead the Qpar Canucks four to three here at the Qplex at in Cupar, Saskatchewan. No penalties to start off this period. And it looks like the refs are ready to go here. We got a little bit of a crack in the ice. It's been so cold lately. He's going to fix the crack here in front of the Bredenbury net. Well, hopefully that doesn't cause any uh, problems for anybody. Here tonight in front of the no the net. <clears throat> and 
Johnson and Fruman and uh, Rogers are going to help uh, referee Murray Hoseapple fix the big gouge in the ice here. It's been so cold lately that uh, it just splinters off. You're listening to Capel Valley Junior Hockey League action here on Melville's Rock Station, the Buzz, as well as on Saskatchewan News Network, www.sasnews.net. This game will be simulcast on the Buzz Mooseman, the Buzz Assiniboia, a Buzz Maple Creek, as well as the Buzz Melville. So four stations across southern Saskatchewan will be covering this game still working on the ice in front here looks like we're going to get going here though hopefully that doesn't cause any problems for anybody in uh, front of that net All right, face off here at center ice. Fruman taking the draw for the Bredenbury Tundra with Johnson, Rogers, Susky, and Hasper out there. Face off won by the Canucks. Shot wide, missed pass. His heart was not quite there yet. Back behind and ripped around and it's kept in by seven. Intercepted by Hasper. Hasper carries it out of his own zone but is picked up by the Canucks player, but then again, uh, Cockwell, Cockwell fighting with it, hammered back in by his, Colodi rips it back in, it's offside, right in front of the Q part, now that is too, not too many men, it's offside, right in front of the Q part, now that is Mitch Cook with the puck, he's checked, Hart comes in to help him out, Susky Johnson, Fruman in Corner. Hart now with it, with it, comes out in front, pass in front, deflected away by uh, Alex Fruman, the captain. Puck now back in the Cupar zone. Center ice, default knocked away by Alex Fruman. Fruman carries it into the zone, he's got Colodi hot on him, dumps it in, picked up by Blundell. Blundell gets it out of his zone, but it's picked up by Desmond Denomi. He want, shovels it up to Fruman. Fruman dumps it in and goes for the change. Whitehawk tries to stick check, but the puck squeezes by him. Bourget dumps it in. Blundell, sorry, dumps it in deep and we'll go for icing. We'll have a face-off down in the Cupar zone. With 18.32 left in the third period here at the Cuplex in Cupar, Saskatchewan, the Bredenbury Tundra lead the Cupar Canucks 4-3. Face off one back by Cupar Canucks. Puck goes by behind the net, picked up by Bourget. Bourget with it. Head now takes it, goes D to D with to Whitehawk. Whitehawk dumps it over to Denomi. Denomi finds Freud up the middle who can't hold on to it and is checked. Picked up by uh Ferozic. Plus a Velarzic, sorry. Carried around, sauce pass wide, not picked up by Bourget, but that will go down for icing. And we'll have a face-off down in the Canucks end. 4-3 is the score. 18-01 left in the third period here at the Qplex in Qpar. You're listening to Melville's Rock Station, The Buzz. As well as Saskatchewan News Network, www.skasknews.net where you can watch lots of local sports across the province of Saskatchewan, showcasing provincial athletes since 2015. Puck squirked out by the Canucks, head with the check. Gets the puck back over to Whitehawk. Whitehawk looking up ice, finds Denomi, hits a huge hit by number five, Trevor Mackinac, leaving Whitehawk uh, slightly injured, but he gets up and finishes his shift, gets back into the play. Picks up the puck now at the top of the circles. Puts it on net in front. Oh, big hit by number three, Bourget. Up into the face of Swain. And we got a man down in the corner. I'm not sure what happened there. 
but the Cupar Canucks player is not getting up, but we have a penalty. Now for number three, Dylan Bourget of the Cupar Canucks. Oh, and uh, the Cupar player will, be get, will make his way to the bench, number 21. Filarczyk looks like he hurt his knee or ankle, and he'll be helped off by the uh, two players to his bench. 17-25 left in the third period. 4-3 is the score. Brenbury Tundra lead the Cupar Canucks here in Cupar at the Cuplex. A regular season game between the two of the Capel Valley Junior Hockey League. For more stats, standings, and scores, visit www.qvhl.ca. Susky now with it, down on the half boards, gets it over to Denomi. Denomi finds Susky in the middle, feeds Fruman wide open in front, no goal. Hasper with it at the top of the surface, puts it on net, puck loose, kept in by Hasper again, shoots it on net. Saved again by Gerber, and we'll have a face off to the left hand side, right, or left hand side, glove hand side of Gerber. Our right from the camera view. Face off one by Cupar, picks it up, puts it off the glass, and that'll go down. Brody Schmidt with it. Bredenbury Tundra on the Langenberg Motors power play. 16.51 left in the third period. 124 left in the power play. Hasper streaking in on net, no goal. Number 20 and 92, Susky with it now in the corner, battling it out deep in the in the zone. Get some help from Denomi in the corner. Squirts out to Hasper. Hasper shoots on net. Gerber can't hold on to it. Picked up by Fruman. Shot by Johnson on net. Gerber holds on. And we will have a face-off to the right-hand side of Gerber's right-hand side, our left-hand side. I guess his blocker side. Fruman loses the draw back. Kolmodowski with it. Puts it up off the glass. Kept in by Johnson. Johnson shoots on net. Rebound picked up by Cupar. Flicks it out of the zone. And Johnson and uh, Cook, or sorry, yes, Cook will go. Cook with it in front for Cupar. Backhands it up over the net. Picked up by Susky now on the half boards on the left wing side. Hits up Fruman at the center ice. Gets it on the stick of Denomi who gets the blue line. Denomi streaking in. He's getting checked. Shoots over. Picked up by Susky on the right wing half boards. He drops it to Hasper. Hasper shoots it on net. Gives it to Denomi. Shoots and scores. And the Brennanbury Tundra go up 5-3 to three with 15-48. And that'll be a Langenberg Motors power play goal by Desmond Denomi from Curtis Hasper and Caden Susky. And they will go up 5-3 to three here with 15.48 left in the third period here at the Cuplex in Cupar, Saskatchewan. Cupar's rink is uh, under renovations right now. Looks like they're putting in new stands along the uh, west and north east sides of the of the rink. Kept in by uh, Cote, dumped off the glass by Cupar. Mishandled by Cote, breakaway by Cupar. 15 gets hooked. We're going to have a penalty, centering pass, and we got a delayed penalty to number 16, or 18, sorry. Or are we going to have a penalty shot? We're going to have a penalty shot, looks like here, for the Cupar Canucks, called by referee Murray Hosapple. Number five, Trevor Mackinac is going to take the shot for the Cupar Canucks. Most exciting play in hockey right here, fans. 15-23 left in the third period. Mackinac shoots. Oh, Skenny mishandles the puck. And that is a missed attempt by Trevor Mackinac on the penalty shot. Had a chance to move it in within one for the Canucks as they trail the Brennanbury Tundra 5-3. to three. I bet the Canucks are wishing they would have got the power play instead of the penalty shot now. 
Number eight, Mitchell Cook for the Canucks with the draw with Proyne. Wins the draw back. Shot on net. Deflected. Held onto by Schmidt. And we'll have a face off to the blocker side of Schmidt. But Mitch Cook for the Canucks and uh, Hartley Proyne for the Tundra on the draw. One back by Cook again. Back on point shot in front. Deflected, loose puck in front, still loose, still loose, and it goes off in the corner. Cook battling Proyne, Proyne with it, carries the puck out of his own zone, gains the red line, keeps going, gets it in, gets nailed by number 15 of the Q Park Canucks. But we have a signal to delayed penalty by the referee here, and it looks like we're going to have a slashing penalty for the Q Park Canucks. Yeah, we have number five, Trevor Mackinac, going away two minutes for slashing, and we'll have a penalty, a power play, a Langenberg Motors power play for the Bredenbury Tundra with a face off to the right hand side or left hand side of the Q Park Canucks. Face off one by the Tundra, but nobody grabs it, and it gets all the way back down. Schmidt will play it behind his net. He'll put a pass around on the boards to Hasper. Hasper with it back in his own corner. He'll look around. He's got a backhand pass off the boards to Johnson. Johnson will get it up to Susky. Susky with it now. Carries it in. One hand is over to Denomi. Denomi tries with a good chance. Kept in now by Hasper on the half boards. He gets it into the corner to Denomi. Johnson will keep it in at the blue line. He'll knock it down into the deep end of the corner for Denomi. Denomi trips. No call. And the Canucks will carry it out of their own zone, coming down two on two. And he's checked by Johnson. Big hit into the, into the boards. Hasper picks up the puck now. Minute 12 on the Langenberg Motors power play for the Bredenbury Tundra. Big hit by number 12, Boyd Wagner on Johnson. Puck at center ice for Hasper. Hasper pokes it by number seven, Blundell. And they'll carry it in. Pass wide to Beatham is mishandled. Then back into the corner. Picked up by the Tundra. Pass into the slot. Shot by number two, Beatham. Saved by, Wag or by Gerber. And we'll have a face-off. Tundra currently lead. Five to three. 13.40 left in the third period. 43 seconds left in the Langenberg Motors power play. And we have a face-off to the right-hand side of the uh, Q Park Canucks bench. One back to Head. Head with it. Goes D to D. One-time shot by Whitehawk over the net. Knocked down by Susky. Susky knocks it back behind the net to Fruman. Fruman looking for a centering pass. Kept in. Head with the shot. Deflected. Well, Gerber's got it. And there's a scrum in front. Started by number 11. Smallest player on the Brenbury Tundra, Falcon Swain. No penalties are going to come out of that, and we're going to have a face-off to the left hand or right hand side of Gerber. For five to three right now, 13:25 left in the third period, 29 seconds left in the Langenberg Motors power play for the Brenbury Tundra. Oh, Kip. Nope, not quite kept in by Whitehawk, and the puck will make its way down into the Bredenbury zone. Hard forecheck by number 12 of the, the big hit, uh, Cupar Canucks on uh, head, and it looks like we have a face-off and a penalty coming. Number seven, Trevor Head of the Bredenbury Tundra is going away two minutes for slashing. And uh, that'll eliminate the power play, and they'll go four on four for the next 15 seconds, and then for the next minute 45, the Q Park Canucks will have a power play, and the Brenbury Tundra will go on the Louis Dreyfus Commodities penalty kill. Face off in the Brenbury Tundra zone. Four on four now for the next 15 seconds. One back by the Canucks, but couldn't do anything with it. Johnson now with the puck behind his own net. Four on four. Hard forecheck coming from the Canucks. Carries it up the center. Brings it in. Two on two. Shoots. Oh, mishandled by Gerber, but goes over the net. 
Five on four now is the, oh, big hit by Johnson behind the play. But five on four is now the power play for the QPAR as the Brenbury Tundra go on the Louis Dreyfus Commodities penalty kill. Puck back behind the QPAR net. 12.37 left in the third period. 5-3 is the score for the Brenbury Tundra. 1.22 left in the penalty to head. Hart with it at center for the Canucks. Canucks feed it over back over to the right hand, left right wing side. Carries it in. Checked by Proin. Johnson with the puck now. He ices it down. 12-14 left in the third period here. Gerber comes out to play it. Picked up by Kolmodowski. Kolmodowski with it now. Looking up center to Hart. Knocked into the hands of Hasper for the Tundra. Tundra now with it. Going long pass out for Fruman at center. The Canucks are changing. Fruman stops. Flicks it in wide to the coffin corner, but doesn't quite get it over there. Dumped in deep by uh, Whitehawk. 11.47 left here in the third period. 33 seconds left in the penalty to head. Number 11 picks up the puck, tries to get it in deep. They're met with some resistance. Kept so we'll keep now with the puck. Back, give and go in front. Mishandles it. Puck goes back out in front. Still loose. Schmidt trying to cover. 11 picks it out again. Centering pass picked up by Fruman. Fruman with the puck off the boards. And we've got a penalty coming to the Q Park Canucks. Looks like a uh, number 7 white. Or 11 white, sorry. Looks like we're going to get two minutes for interference. And with six seconds left in the penalty kill for the penalty to head, the uh, Bredenbury Tundra will go on the Langenberg Motors power play for a minute 54. With a faceoff down in the Cupar Canucks zone. Cupar trails the Bredenbury Tundra 5 to 3. And we're going to go five or uh, four on four for six seconds here. Denomi with it at the point, dumps it in deep, is in front for Susky centering pass, knocked away by the Canucks. That'll end the penalty to head, and the uh, Tundra will go on the Langenberg Motors power play for the next minute and 45 seconds. Battling for the puck along the half boards here is Susky, Whitehawk, and Head. Picked up by Whitehawk, giving it to Susky. Susky's got it at the blue line, he carries it in, checked by 15. Carried in by the Canucks. Slap shot on it. Big save by Brody Schmidt. Kicks it off to the half boards. Picked up by Head now in the Tundra. Head looking for a pass. Finds Susky. That was risky. Finds, gets it over. Susky streaking in on the right wing side. Drops it off the boards to Hasper. Hasper takes it. Shot on net. Blocked by the Canucks and carried out of their own zone. Two on one on the Head. Comes in on the Canucks. Shot. Oh, is knocked away by. Uh, Denomi, Denomi in the corner now looking for the puck here. Gets it off wide to Susky. Susky's not there to pick up the puck. Number 12 will dump it off the boards, but to picked up by Susky with a shot. Deflected up and that'll hit the roof. And we will have a face off. It's like inside the Cupar Canucks zone with 10 minutes, 2 seconds left, and 45 seconds left in the Langenberg Motors power play for the Bredenbury Tundra. Score is 5 to 3 in favor of the Bredenbury Tundra. Fruman out to take the draw against Eric Cockwell. One by Cockwell, or for a, uh, Tundra. Tundra goes D to D. Johnson mishandles the pass. He's got it on the half board. Shoots it on net wide. Puck now back behind the net of the Cupar Canucks. Battle picked up by the Canucks now carrying it out of their own zone. Looks like Colin Collodi will wheel it up. He gains the red line, fires a long slap shot, which will go off of Schmidt and over the glass. We will have a face-off inside of the Bredenbury Tundra zone. 9.39 left in the third period. 22 seconds left in the Bredenbury Tundra Langenberg Motors power play. Fruman wins the draw back to Hasper. Hasper gets it blocked away, but it gets to Susky up at the slot, who then finds Swain at the red line, who gets it into the Cupar zone, but it is knocked away by Colodi. Susky with it, cuts into the slot, cutting across, shoots, 
Saved by Gerber, a rebound outside. Sits and is knocked down out into the Fredbury Tundra zone. And that'll do it for the power, the Langenberg Motors power play. And it'll go back to five on five for nine minutes and 10 seconds left in the third period. 5-3 is the score for in favor of the Bredenbury Tundra over the, Capel, or the Q Park Canucks. You're listening to Capel Valley Junior Hockey League action here on Mevel's Rock Station, The Buzz, and Saskatchewan News Network, www.sasnews.net. Johnson back behind the net. Swain kicks it off off the boards. Kept in by Colodi. Fruman finds Rogers wide on the left wing side. Blundell puts it off the boards, but uh, Rogers tries to check him, loses his stick. And he's just going to go straight off the ice. We got a big hit by Beatham, but he's going to get a penalty. Delayed call against the Canucks. Cupar carries it in, shoots it on net. Big rebound. Oh, that's not possession. That shouldn't uh, be either way. We're going to have a penalty now. Number two, Logan Beatham, two minutes for boarding. And they will go on the Louis Dreyfus Commodities penalty kill with 8.25 left in the third period. The uh, Bredenbury Tundra currently lead 5-3 over the uh, Cupar Canucks here at the Cuplex in Cupar, Saskatchewan. It'll be 5 on 4 for the next two minutes in favor of the Cupar Canucks. Face off one by Fruman, but picked up by Cupar. Hart with it down below the goal line. Still with it. Got behind the net. Looking for a centering pass. Nobody there. Looking again. Puck deflected up. Kept in by the Canucks. Puts it down deep uh, to number 12. Wagner. Wagner looking in front. Stopped by Whitehawk. Head now with him. Cycles it over to uh, and pass in front to Hart. Picked up by uh, Suski and cleared out of the zone. 7.56 left in the third period. Now 5-3 is the score. Minute 28 left in the Louis Dreyfus Commodities penalty kill for the Tundra. Pass out to Hart. Dropped out for Cupar. Cupar picks it up over the blue line. Whitehawk docks it down deep into the Cupar zone. Number two, Kolodowski now with it. Picked up by Bourget. Bourget puts it over onto the right wing side. Carried in across the red line is Cockwell. Cockwell loses it at the blue line. Komodowski picks it up, gets it over to Cook. Cook with it, and it is deflected up over the boards by uh, Caden Susky. And we will have a face-off probably inside the zone here of the Brenbury Tundra zone. Well, the referee is signaling number 15 to go back to the bench so Komodowski can come back out because there's a late change. He'd already lowered his hand saying no more people on the ice. Face off one by the Tundra. Hasper clears it out of his zone and that will go down for no icing as they're sitting on the Louis Dreyfus Commodities penalty kill. 42 seconds left to the penalty to Logan Beetham for boarding. 7.02 left in a third period. Bourget crosses the line, shoots it on net, stopped by Schmidt, and we'll have a face-off to the on the blocker side of Schmidt. Your left, his right. 32 seconds left in the power play for the Q Park Canucks. 6:56 left in the third period. Face-off won by the Canucks. Hasper though gets it off the boards, carries it out of his own zone. He gets it, puts it off of number. Uh, 18 Cook. Oh, we have a big hit by Bourget. But well, that'll get a will be an elbowing call. And number three, Dylan Bourget of the Cupar Canucks. That's some words for Captain Alex Fruman. He should get an extra two for not reporting to the penalty box immediately. But it looks like they're just gonna keep it as a two minutes for interference, is what it looks like now. Number three, Dylan Bourget of the Q Park Canucks. So 17 seconds will pass and Beetham will come out of the box. And that means uh, a minute 43 will be the power play, the, the Langenberg Motors power play for the uh, Bredenbury Tundra. We'll play four on four here for the next 16 seconds. 
Canucks with the puck behind their own zone, but carries it out. Knocked down by Denomi. Denomi and uh, Suski with a hard four check on here. Canucks working the puck back behind their own net. Cockwell with it now. Cockwell looking for a, a pass. No one there. Still with it. Suski for checking. Denomi for checking. Cockwell with it again. Cockwell still with it at center. Knocked away by Hasper, but it ends up on Cockwell's stick somehow. It takes a shot. He's picking a fight with uh, Montana Johnson. Johnson now down with the puck in the corner. He'll try to get the puck out, but he'll lose it. Hasper with it now back behind his own net. He'll put a backhand pass over to Fruman. Fruman will not get skate pass, but 12 will keep it in for the Canucks, but it'll be carried out by Hasper. Hasper checked at center ice, left for Hart. Hart with it in the slot. Now Hart is skating in, and he's stripped by Susky. It's Susky and Fruman go two on two back the other way into the Cupar zone. Shot! Oh, misses the net. It almost looked like it went through. 5.27 left in the third period. 5-3 is the score for the Brenbury Tundra. 40 seconds left in their power play. Langenberg Motors power play. Puck gets shot around. Not kept in by Rogers though. Head now with the puck. He's got it. Head looking for Susky. Susky can't handle it. And picked up by 21. Filarczyk. And that is knocked down into the Brenbury zone. Picked up by Head behind his net. In the Brenbury end. He's looking. He's standing with it behind his net. Looking for a pass. He comes out. He's... Checked by a hard four check by number five, Trevor Mackinac of the, Can of the Canucks. Rogers with it up the left hand side. He's getting it across the blue line. Hard wrist shot. Walker save. Rebound left in front. Fruman trying to get at it. Still sitting there. 21. Still knocking at it. Puck goes down towards Gerber and he'll cover it up. And we'll have a face off to the right hand side of Gerber, our left from the camera. 4.33 left in the third period. 5-3 is the score right now for the Bredenbury Tundra. Referee having some words with some of the players. We've got Prine, Beetham, Rogers, Whitehawk, and Head out there for the Bredenbury Tundra. Puck shot down, big. Chase down, head with it, the heart looking in front, and they called it icing. They didn't wave it off. Head and heart, with a, or uh, yeah, Ethan Hart with a big race down. Someone, yeah, that's a dangerous play when they leave it to the last minute. With something like that, they should have probably waved off. Some kids can get hurt on that. Proying with the face off now, or under the left hand side or right-hand side of Gerber. One back by the Can Canucks. Cook wraps it around. We've got to uh, pick it up on the half boards. The Canucks skated out of their own zone, cross the blue line, up the middle, coming in on the left on the left wing side. Four, Cockwell with a shot, but it deflects and ends up in the corner. Whitehawk looking for it. 12 bats out. It gets it in front. Shot, shoots, and scores! And the Cupar Canucks with a goal. From Ethan Hart will go within one with 4.1 seconds left in the third period. 5-4 is now the score. Brenbury Tundra lead by one over the Cupar Canucks here at the Cuplex in Cupar, Saskatchewan. Four minutes and one second left in the third period. It's a close game right up into the end here. Swain, Denomi, Cote, Johnson, Hasper out for Brenbury. Hasper with it, puts it off the boards to Denomi. Denomi can't handle it. Picked up by the Canucks now. Canucks looking deep for a pass, misses, and that'll go down for icing, and they cannot change. And it'll be a face-off to the right-hand side of Gerber. Three minutes, 52 seconds left. Looks like Rogers has left the game. I'm not sure if he was told to leave by the referee or if he is leaving him on an injury. A little short in the bench a bit for the Redbury Tundra. Denomi with it on the half boards. Takes it in behind the net for the Cupark Canucks. Puts it out in front. Swain with a chance. Carried out of there by 18. Cook wraps it around. Kept in by Denomi. Denomi trying to keep it in again. Whoa, and a big hit by Cote. 
Johnson now checked behind his own net. Looking for the puck. Carries it out of the center. Dangerous play, but picked up by Susky in the slot. He carries it into the Q-Par zone. Carries it around the net. Gets it out over to Cote. Cote tries to put it in on net. Knocked off by the Q-Par Canucks. Canucks try to come around on the corner. Kept in by Susky. Whacked at it, but picked up by the Canucks. Then kept in again by the Canucks. Then kept in deep into the Bread and Bury zone. Picked up by Johnson. Johnson goes D to D with Hasper behind his own net. Who then wraps it back towards Johnson. Picked up by Swain. And in the slot is the Cupar Canucks. 15. Don't have a number for him yet. Hasper now with the puck. He'll take it out in his corner. Looking back behind the net again for Johnson. Johnson looking out. For Susky, Susky's pass miss. Cockwell gets a hold of it, but is knocked away by Cote. Picked up by Swain at his own blue line, looking for Susky, who reaches for it, and that'll go down for icing. With two minutes and 25 seconds left in the third period, the Brenbury Tundra currently lead 5-4 to four over the Cupar Canucks. A little face-off to the glove-hand side of Schmidt. Hart, Cockwell, Mackinac, Colodi out for Cupar. Johnson wraps it around to Proyne. Proyne with it on the right wing side. Gets kept in by, knocked back in by Cupar. Back behind the net of the Bredenbury Tundra is Johnson. Johnson steps out, makes a pass over to Susky. Susky on the left wing side gets it to Fruman. Fruman chips it into the Cupar zone. Two minutes and four seconds left here in the third period. 5-4 is the score for the Bredenbury Tundra. It's like they've settled back into playing the trap. Johnson now tries to keep the puck out. Again, flicks it out over the neutral zone, but kicked up by the Cupar Canucks, who then dump it deep into the Bredenbury zone. Johnson going back behind his own net for the puck. He's got it, carries it out, but is kept in by the, Bred uh, the Can Canucks. Hart with it, fighting with uh, Hasper behind the net with Fruman. Picked up by number 12 in the slot. Deflected out, Hasper with it, trying to grab the puck. Oh, it's back down now for Hart in the in uh, Brenbury's end, back behind the net. Johnson trying to check Hart. Hart still holding on to the puck. Susky pokes it back, back behind his net. Johnson with it behind Schmidt. He'll carry it out, and he'll get it out of the Brenbury zone, but knocked down by the Canucks, and they'll hammer it back into the Brenbury end, carried back in by Hasper. Hasper being forechecked hard. Puts it off the glass and gets it out of his zone. Sus Susky now misses the pass, but it's picked up again by the Canucks. The Canucks are streaking in. Number 11 comes around the net, looking wrap around. Stopped by Schmidt. Rebound in front. Oh, it's knocked away by Fruman and Point. Shot on net. Eight with the rebound. Taken and cleared out by Susky, and that'll get down with 39 seconds left in the third period. And that'll go down for icing. 37.4, sorry. 5-4 is the score here in the third period. The Brenbury Tundra. It's like a timeout taken by the Cupar Canucks. And we'll go for a 30-second timeout. 5-4 is the score. 37.4 seconds left in the third period. Brenbury Tundra lead. here at the Qplex in Qpar, Saskatchewan. You're listening to Capel Valley Junior Hockey League action on Saskatchewan News Net, www.sasnews.net. And this is also being simulcast on Melville's rock station, The Buzz, as well as Mooseman's rock station, The Buzz, and Assiniboia and Maple Creek's rock stations, The Buzz, as well, across the Buzz Network in southern Saskatchewan. Face off to the right hand side, glove hand side of uh, Schmidt. Our right, his left. Net is empty for the Q Park Canucks and the Bredenbury Tundra now call a timeout. Looks like the Canucks are going to line up six on five with the net empty. Oh, looks like a uh, referee is saying he can't call a second timeout on top of another timeout. I'm. Looks like we're. Uh, Trying to get the game going, I guess. As a tactic, probably, to disrupt the other team. And our strategy by uh, John K. Waiton. 37.4 seconds left. The Canucks will line up six on five. 
in the Bredenbury zone. Hart will take the face off against Fruman. Fruman, Hart wins it back to the defense, but shoots it on net, deflected in front, and that'll be picked up by number 12, Wagner, on the half boards. He'll get it over out to the defense to Kolmodowski. Kolmodowski will cut across the cook. Shot on net. Whistle with 23.3 seconds left in the third period. And it looks like we got a penalty coming for both the uh, Q Park Canucks and the Bredenbury Tundra with 23.3 seconds left here in the third period here in Q Park. Bredenbury Tundra lead 5-4. And that'll, because it's a coincidental minors, looks like it'll still be six on five. Looks like the Bredenbury Tundra need one more player out on, oh no, he was hiding, never mind, they have five. Fruman out to take the draw against Hart. And it looks like Fruman is trying to call a timeout. They will, refs won't let him. Uh, yeah, timeout for the Bredenbury Tundra. Murray Hosapple going, yeah, now you can call it because can't stack two in the same stoppage of play. So he's trying to get the game going. I mean, it's a little cold there in the Brenbury Cuplex tonight. Score right now is 5-4. 23.3 seconds left in the third period. 5-4 for the Brenbury Tundra. You're, wa you're watching Capel Valley Junior Hockey League action on Saskatchewan News Network, www.saskatchewannews.net, and as well as you can listen to it on Melville's Rock Station, The Buzz, www.thebuzzrocks.ca, as well as be simulcast in Moose, Minn, Assiniboia, and Maple Creek as well. Face off now in the Tundra zone. Net still empty for the Canucks. Canucks win the, uh, the draw back. Cook guts it. Picked up by Fruman. Fruman. Backhands it out of the zone, but it's picked up by Komodowski at the blue line. He's having trouble holding on the puck. 12 seconds left here in the third period. 10 seconds. Bredenbury gets the puck at their own blue line. Hasper shoots, and he scores! 4.1 seconds left. Hasper, with the empty net goal, will go up 6-4, to four, and it looks like it'll put the final nail in the coffin for the uh Cupar Canucks here at Cupar's Cuplex. 4.1 seconds left in the third period. Are they just going to run the clock out or are we just going to... Yeah, it looks like we're still going to have a face-off here at center. And uh, Bredenbury Tundra look like they're going to come out with the win here. Face-off won by the Tundra. Shot on net! Misses wide. The Cupar Canucks will go down... Six to four on the Bradenbury Tundra, who will win the game. And you're listening to Capel Valley Junior Hockey League action on www.thebuzzrocks.ca and Saskatchewan Newsnet, www.sasnews.net. Final score, six to four, Bradenbury Tundra.